Hi everyone, welcome back to B17 The Mighty 8th. Here we are with Seacup and her crew completed so far 11 missions and they have 54 aircraft, enemy aircraft kills to their name. Um, yeah, 11 down. Mission number 12 in front of us. Uh, let's head into the brief room and find where today's target will be. So here we are then. Uh, June 3rd, 1944. Primary target is Brest Harbour. Secondary target, the U-boat base at Brest. And tertiary target is none. If you remember, we were sent here um, two or three missions ago, and it should have been a relatively easy mission, we thought. Anyway, a bit of a milk run, but we end up losing half the squadron due to flak and, uh, and damage causing uh, multiple mid-air collisions. So I'm a little bit nervous about this one. Um, ordnance selected, 6 times 500 pound general purpose and 12 times 100 pound incendiaries. Distance to farthest target is 834 miles. Our escort will be one squadron of P-47s and a squadron of P-51s. Breast Harbour, flak strength is moderate. Fighter strength minimal, which is good. Priority is high, damage none. The U-boat base... Uh, flak or strength of moderate, fighter strength minimal, priority medium, damage none, and no tertiary target selected. Okay, we'll sign up for that. Have a look at the reconnaissance fill. So we can see the uh, waterline here and the um, towns and the woodland on the left hand side. And we can start to see the port. And we've got the key sides out here. We've got sh looks like a damaged ship there. Um, more cargo ships there. Possibly a warship there. And the storage facilities on the shore. Having a quick look at the route. Uh, so here we are. Um, we'll be heading southwest over London, over the Isle of Wight, heading down uh, and doing a run over the Brittany countryside and then out to the sea and back um, over uh, British soil. So that should be relatively um, calm. We may get some Luftwaffe fighters coming out on the edge of their range there. Uh, so we may get a little bit of aerial action, but um, it's probably going to be the flak around this area. Um, it doesn't look too bad, but with a U-boat base there, there's going to be quite a lot of flak in that area. Looking at um, Normandy, it looks okay at the moment. Obviously, there's probably large um, groups of ships am amassing on the southern coast of England right now. Not that we'd know about it, of course. Right, let's get the rest of the crew and head to the aircraft. Start engines. Right, as the After flight crew switch. gets the aircraft um, fired up, Cow we'll... Um, Open left. Let Open them right. do that, head the to the runway boat. and take off and form up with the rest Mixture of the squadron. Auto rich. One thing worth mentioning, Booster pumps. Wilson was oh. injured last time, so our replacement, Energizing. Harold Schumacher, the gunner, he's got about 20-odd well, kills himself, hasn't he? Uh, he's returned with us uh, for this mission, so we've got a able replacement on the, uh, the rear guns. Welcome back everyone, Rise. We are currently uh, 
8.37 in the morning, coming up to our cruise altitude of 25,000 feet, speed 150, heading 226. Uh, so we're heading uh, out now over the um, water, there's the Isle of Wight there, um, you've got Portsmouth and Southampton below the clouds, we'll be heading across the channel over to uh, France. Now the original cruise speed was only 50 sorry, cruise altitude is only 15,000 feet, having arisen up to uh, 25,000. We have had to shortcut some of the route um, to make sure that we have enough fuel, uh, which may take us a little bit closer to the uh, Lofopo range than was originally planned, but that's um, kind of what we have to do. And we'll, we'll be ready for any Lofopo fighters that come out. Now, on our port side, Laden Maiden, she's a rookie crew coming out after the previous rookie crew was taken out um, last mission. So Laden Maiden is our port side wingman, we'll be looking after them as best we can. And on our starboard side, killing time, always with us, look at that. Four kills and uh, 11 missions as well. So the ever present killing time is uh, looking after our starboard side, which is uh, quite reassuring indeed. And it's incoming. Hey, hi. We're just over the channel. Good hits on that one. I can't get my gun to that one. I see him. God. Oh, sniped him. Got one down low. Uh, these guys are dead. Yeah, he's on, he's on flames pouring out, don't you dare hit a bomber. Nice, I think Schumacher's just added to his tally. Well, there we go. Cliffhoffer did send four aircraft up, but I think we've dispatched them in pretty quick time. I think all of them were destroyed. Uh, the, the escorts haven't even arrived at this point. I mean, that's how early on they uh, still see England, for heaven's sake. <laughs> but yes, the uh, Cliffhoffer does stretch over the channel, so... Um, there you go. First threat neutralised. We'll see if anything else comes our way. Okay, we are coming to the um, 90 degree turn to the west. Uh, this will be the decision point, and this will be where we'll take the weather forecast to see which target we're going to strike. So as we sit at the navigation station, Pilot navigator. here we go. Okay. Turn coming up. Pilot navigator, pick up a heading of 291. Repeat, 291. Okay. Right, turn executed without any incident, which is good. Let's have a look then. Weather forecast. Weather at primary target is believed to be oh, it's cloudy, always cloudy with seven tenths cloud at approximately eight thousand feet. Ah. The secondary is next door. Weather at secondary target is believed to be cloudy with six tenths cloud at approximately eight thousand feet. Well, it's slightly better at the secondary, but not much. Um, now we know what the primary target looks like because we've seen the reconnaissance film. We haven't seen what the U-boat pens look like, although they're going to be from this 25,000 feet. They're just going to be a large concrete block, aren't they? So uh, on the on the um, waterfront. So um, let's let's go for the. I don't know. Let's see if what the. Um, the bombardier can see from the nose, see if there's any indication of which would be best to go for. Right, from the bombardier's position, oh look, it's right under that bank of cloud there. Um, it's typical isn't it, everywhere else looks quite quite pleasant and open and 
not really any clear skies. It's just over the target. We've got that bit of cloud, which is frustrating. We've got a town there, but I think the targets are about there. So, um, yes. I think we'll stick with the primary for now. And we'll see how that goes. We can always go around and switch to the secondary if need be. We are on the bomb run. Bomb doors, pull over. Okay, here we are from the nose of the B-17. Let's just wait for it to settle down. We've got the Northern bomb site literally just in front of our face. Um, yeah, that's not good at all. Um, the flak's going to be coming in thick. Uh, one thing we can do is the Northern bomb site. We can reduce the uh, the drop range because it's going to be quite a narrow drop. Uh, wait for the flak to start r erupting around us any time soon. Yeah, that is that is horrible. Yeah, we're not going to have much joy doing this, I don't think. Uh, we'll see how it goes. The um, the two targets are right next to each other anyway. So one's eight tenths cloud, the other's six tenths cloud. They're going to be both a challenge, but there are there is a break coming up. Just just here and just here, so we may get lucky. That might give us the fraction of the time that we may need to drop. There go the little friends. Stay out of the flat, boys. Well, when it comes, I'm surprised it hasn't erupted yet. Maybe the uh, the overcast conditions are challenging them, but they they should know we're coming and they should be putting up a wall of flak any second. Right, I can see it. There's the target there. Lock on for the moment. Wait for this top layer of cloud to go and we should be able to see the, uh, the key side again. Um, no, we got that big chunk of cloud moving. But here's the ooh, the river. Oh, there's the flag. Right, yeah, it's moved. Hang on, let's. There it is. There. Lock that on. flat coming over now. Hopefully that'll clear pretty quick. Allow us to get this drop in. Do you know what? I'm gonna go a little bit more. Go right in the middle. Let's not try to be too surgical with this. Let's just try and hit something. Horrible weather. Okay, this is getting a little bit thicker. This is what I was expecting around the U-boat then. Got our level. There's not much we can do about it. Just hope they don't hit us. I'm hoping we'll get a, uh, a couple of breaks in the clan coming up. Hopefully we can get that so we can... Here we go. It's lightening up at the moment. All oh, right, I see where we are. Okay, let's um, let's go here so we get all the buildings. Um, and what I'll do, I'm actually going to extend the drop road so we can actually extend the the drop a little bit. Oops, right, let's get that right about 
Oh, I see that warship. Let's put it on the tail of that warship. That's a near miss. Some flat hit and some of the crew. No, it's like a cruiser down there. I don't know if you can see the cruiser just here. We're going to try and hit that and let the bombs run on into the buildings beyond. As we lose them, it's going to be a blind drop. But hopefully we've done enough. So here we are then, yes it does indeed look like a cruiser is in port along with these um, merchant ships and we've got the port beyond. We should have the, uh, well that's a big, got a big ships over there as well. Uh, here comes the one tanker, the cruiser's gone. And the bombs go on into the, oh beautiful and stop short, well, almost, of the town, which is quite good, so yes. Good, good stuff. That is happy days. Two ships sunk. One of them being, well, it's not sunk, but a heavily damaged cruiser, which is nice to see. Now, this flak is pretty horrendous, and let's get some dodging done. Right, formation, descend 1000. And again. Let's try and get below this. Getting a little bit uh, below it now. It's obviously lightened up a lot. We've moved away from the main bulk of it, oh, which is probably around the the U-boat pens. But um, a little bit more lighter flak now. But we are the main body has descended just below the level of flak. This group of six up there are kind of still in it, just about. But hopefully they'll be out pretty soon. Uh, the rookies have got a bit of damage in the tail, I notice. How are we? We've got a we've got a few holes here and there, but otherwise okay. The rookies, yeah, they're taking a bit round the uh, the tail. Look at that. How are they? The, um, the waist gunners are up, so that's they're not injured, which is good. They seem to be okay. Have a quick look on. Um, oh, a bit of damage here for killing time. And a bit round the uh, the cockpit and the uh, the nose section there, but otherwise okay. Oh, only three little friends. Where is the other one, mate? I, I asked myself. Not good. Maybe he was taken out by the flak. I suspect that's what may have happened. Or maybe a mechanical failure, but most likely probably flak. Right. That all seems to be going well. We're now leaving... French coast well, it's just below us now going feet wet um, hopefully it should be a relatively straight forward uh, flight home just nursing the aircraft and crew if they've taken any flak damage uh, and hopefully we can get these boys back home oh we've got a cry um, our tail gunner Hal Schumacher's gone down injured we're going to send old Wilson oh William sorry Come on, Schumacher, you've only just rejoined the crew. Hopefully he won't need any further medical treatment, because Wilson's going to be out for a little while, I think. So hopefully he can pick um, Schumacher up. You can see the damage caused by flak there on the, um, the left-hand side. 
But it might have been the fighters, but it's most likely going to be the flak. Oh, are you able to pick him up, Banks? If not, um, better? yeah, he's got him. Well done. And it's over, guys. He's hit, but he'll be okay. All right, I'm okay now. Thanks. Good stuff. Let's continue on then. Okay, plane sailing to this point. No further crew injuries. That's London down there. Sprawling metropolis. Um, and we're going to head over here to where our airbase is. Oh, hello. We've got fighters diving for the ground. I guess that's the um, P-51s. They are the escorts for the turn leg. They're uh, obviously just breaking away and uh, I hope heading her home. And with that, we're home. That is home base below us. Mission number 12 seems to have gone well to this point. Hopefully none of these Orbit, damaged aircraft will have any issues orbiting and landing. Uh, and we can get the, uh, the squadron home safe and sound. Only Schumacher took a bit of damage. Hopefully um, it's nothing minor and he doesn't have to go to the uh, hospital wing. But um, let's get these boys down ASAP and head into debriefing. Okay, here we go then. Gear down. Aircraft, is he going in first? I hope not. Gear is down. Deploy flaps. Looks like we're following ease a bit. Mm, he might be going in for us. I think he is going in for us. Um, I was trying to slow down, not to try and catch him up too much. If not, I'll land parallel on the grass. A bit awkward now. I don't think he's landing. He's not making a very good um, approach if he is landing. Either that or he's got damage and he hasn't been able to... Um, oh god, I think he's going low. He is going in, you know. I think he's going for a, um, a belly landing. Ooh. No, no, oh, hang on. He's going for the runway. Let's break off. He's going short. Oh, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. Let's land off the runway. That might explode, so we're going to land on the grass. It's June. Oh, bit of a heavy landing, but I'm not. I'm trying to keep away from that aircraft. There's another one already landed, but spun out on the grass. Let's get away from that bomber because I've got a feeling when she stops, she may explode. Welcome to mission debriefing. So. That aircraft we saw crunch down was actually killing time. I suspect she had um, both her pilots black out at the last minute, causing the issue. Uh, the rookie crew was the one spun out on the airbase, so that's uh, a bit worrying. That may change the debriefing somewhat. Oh, ho, ho. thankfully not. So June 3rd. 1944. Brest Harbour was attacked. Distance flown 832 miles. Bombers lost missing zero. There we go. She is categorized as returned home and recoverable, which is amazing. I'm not quite sure of it, um, but we'll see. Enemy fighter shot down. Four, four of the easiest kills I think we've ever had. They were obviously rookie pilots coming directly from behind, and they had every one of the rear gunners, top turret gunners and the ball turret gunners pointing their 50 cal in their direction. Didn't stand a chance. Bomb damage estimate, near miss. That's disappointing. I think we did a lot more damage than near miss. However, um, Staff Sergeant Schumacher did indeed get a medium wound, so he's out. 
So I wonder if Wilson's ready to return. I don't think he is. Uh, we'll see what we get. So here we are. Here's the bomb drop. So this would be the um, cargo ship. That would be the cruiser. That's probably the cruiser as well. And then we're going down the, well, into the water or down the quayside. And these are the buildings which we also hit. So I, I think that's a bit harsh. So commanding officer's summary, no promotions. Um, Legion of Merit for Schumacher. Did he bag all four aircraft then, maybe? Wow, Schumacher really is bringing in those medals. He, he, you know, I know he's wounded, but he won't be able to sit upright with all the um, medals strapped to his chest at this rate. Uh, no crews uh, need to be accounted for, which is good news. Let's have a look at the post-reconnaissance film. And now we'll be able to determine the damage. Oh, they've got the flak, uh, the the flak and the cloud issues. So um, you're gonna have to really squint. But you can see this key side's damaged. That ship's destroyed. That cruiser's damaged. And there's oh, this is this is the most useless reconnaissance film I think I've ever seen. You needn't have bothered. Sorry for waiting, wasting 20 seconds of your life there. Anyway, let's head into the commander's office to read a little bit more detail. Right then. 12 missions complete. 57 kills. Here we are then. Mission number 12. That's quite a lot of scrolling. Um, Breast Harbor was attacked. Near miss. Fighter shot down. Schumacher was credited with three, so we don't know who got the fourth one. One of the other bombers got the uh, the the fourth 109, but Schumacher gets another three um, kills to his name. Also wounded and the Legion of Merit. Nice. Have a look at the crew information. So Foster Graves, our bombardier, he's got excellent gunnery skills and excellent bomb aiming. Uh, has he been on every mission? He's got a bronze star. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, he has. No injuries to date. So, um, yes, twelve missions complete. Almost halfway through his patrol, uh, his uh, tour duty. Robert Culver, our uh, navigator, above average bomb aiming. Sorry, below average bomb aiming. Good navigation. That's improved. Um, average first aid. He was injured for a little bit, wasn't it? He's got purple heart, yeah. So, four, five, six, seven, eight missions he has completed. Our pilot, Marty Copeland, he's got um, above average piloting. Uh, he was wounded for quite a while. He's completed four, five, six missions. Um, he was our original one. Our co-pilot, Martin Roth, was injured and returned at the same time, so he's completed six missions as well. He's got good piloting skill, which is nice to see. Peter Shu on our top terror, and also our engineer, has excellent gunnery skills and above average first aid and technical skill. Uh, he's got a soldier's medal, a bronze star, and a silver star. And I think he's completed every mission so far. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, no injuries to date. Fantastic. Clean bill of health from, uh, for Shu. Xavier Scott, our radio operator. He has been has been injured, but he's been with us most of the uh, missions. He's got above average gunnery and above average first aid. He received a Purple Heart on May the 7th. Uh, he's completed 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight missions. Um, Cole Roberts, our bull turret gunner. I think he's completed every mission. Excellent gunnery, uh, average first aid, poor technical. Uh, no, he has been um, wounded. He also has a Medal of Honor. Um, he's got 11 missions to his name. So yeah, he um, he's missed one. So when do we attack Brest, was it? Oh, I can't remember. It was a horrible one anyway. Maybe it's the one he set out. Robert Berger, our left waist gunner. He's got good gunnery skills, a below average first aid and technical. Purple Heart on uh, the four, uh, May 4th. 
Uh, he's completed four, five, six missions. Eustace Howe, right waist gunner. Uh, excellent gunnery skills. Um, average first aid, below average. Technical, I think. Purple Heart on the 19th of May. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But has completed all missions. He was only out for a couple of days, so he didn't actually miss a mission, which was nice to see. And Tony Wilson has returned. So Schumacher was injured. Um, Tony Wilson returns, which is good. Um, so the, these two tail gunners are injuring themselves and coming back just in the nick of time. He's got good gunnery skills. Um, first aid is av average and technical is below. He's been wounded numerous times. He's got the Purple Heart, Medal of Honor, Bronze Star and this Distinguished Service Cross. Um, one, two, three, four, five missions complete. Yes, light wound and he was back on the... Um, be back on the 6th so he will be ready to uh, sorry the 5th so he will be um, good to go for the next mission quick look at the hospital Harold Schumacher our tail gunner from this mission who is technically a replacement Wilson is the original uh, excellent gunnery skills above average first aid below technical medals look at this medal of honor distinguished service cross soldier medal purple heart distinguished service cross uh, legion of merit uh, all from five missions. Incredible, really. Uh, should be back on the uh, 2nd of June? Or was that the previous? Oh, expected, 17th of June. Sorry, that was the one he just returned from. Now he's been injured again. He's out again. So it's just Charles Schumacher in the uh, hospital wing at the moment, which is good. Any new mail for us from the 8th Air Force HQ? Um, all commanding officers, 8th Air Force, intelligence news, the US, UK, USSR, Belgium, Norway and the Netherlands met on May 16th to sign an agreement relating to the administration of countries in Europe as they are liberated. Okay, so we've got the Eastern Theatre, Mediterranean Theatre... Pacific Theatre, Burma News, Army Air Force, 8th Air Force, on May 7th, the 8th, had its first ever day in which over 900 bombers successfully attacked targets in Europe. Targets for that day include Berlin, Osnabrück and Munster, as well as others. The 8th Air Force also started the Allied Air Force's invasion preparations with an attack against the Luftwaffe. Marshalling yards and airfields were hit on the 9th of May and throughout the last month. On May 11th, the 9th Air Force joined this offensive, hitting airfields with its medium bombers and fighter bombers. The 8th Air Force occupied the last of its planned stations uh, with the transfer of North Pickenham Airfield on the May 22nd uh, from the RAF. The 8th Air Force now occupies 77 stations, including 66 airfields that host 82 operational or HQ units. Just as a slight uh, side note, um, uh, Pickenham, North Pickenham Airfield is uh, it's got a go-kart track on it, and it's got a like, poultry farm and some uh, wind turbines on it. But that's where I learned to ride a motorbike. It's just, just one of those little weird little things for you. <laughs> a little bit of news. Um, so, dear Second Lieutenant Copeland, in response to your mission reports, headquarters has issued the following order. I'm passing it on to you with the Colonel's instructions to carry out as soon as possible. Sincerely, Captain Simon A. Rosenbaum, 381st Staff Group. Uh, declaration. Oh, it's the award. Okay, so oh, to Schumacher. Nice. His behaviour was cited by his commanding officer in dispatches, and the award received review committee after deliberation concurs with the decoration for these actions. Fantastic, well done, Schumacher. Right, quick pop outside to look at the bomber. She is looking good. We'll get the 12th bomb marker painted on. Uh, three more crosses as well. Uh, and she does look pretty good. A couple of holes to patch up. A bit of tape will do, especially on this side here. Um, but yeah. Engines and all main control surfaces seem to be fine. So we'll be good to go for, hopefully, lucky number 13 next time. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you for number 13. Take care. Bye-bye.